Mesh Machine is one of my favorite Blender add-ons and you should probably know why because the stuff this add-on can do is absolutely crazy. Now before I even begin to explain what Mesh Machine is or what Mesh Machine does, we need to go quickly to the basics. So in 3D hard surface modeling, there are two types of workflows, workflows with polygons and workflows with mathematics. Now it's a bit more complex than this, but this is the easiest way to explain it. And quick interruption here, if you're not familiar with any of the topics we're discussing in this video, then I would highly recommend taking our free hard surface jumpstart course. You can get that in the link in the description and you'll be up to speed in just a few hours. First, let's start with Blender. If I add in any sort of object, let's say a sphere for example, you'd see that this sphere consists of polygons which are essentially defined by vertices, edges, and faces. Now let's hop into a CAD software like Moi 3D. There are plenty of other ones like SolidWorks and Fusion 360, but Moi 3D is my personal favorite. In Moi, you'll notice we don't have polygons. It's basically just a surface. The difference between polygon meshes and CAD surfaces is that CAD defines their models by mathematical equations, and software like Blender or Maya or 3ds Max defines their models by polygons. Now there are pros and cons to both workflows, if you've seen my videos before, you'd know I prefer to work in Blender. But let me quickly show you where CAD comes in handy and is actually better than Blender. For example, if I want to cut a hole into the sphere in Moi, it's as simple as cutting in the hole, adding a bevel, and I'm done. Now if I were to do this in Blender, shit starts to get real. If I try cutting the sphere in Blender, all of a sudden the shading goes ballistic, and if I try to add in a bevel afterwards, then I about have a heart attack. So why does this happen in Blender? The reason this happens is because of how polygons work. First of all, when I cut this hole into the cylinder, you'll see some nasty shading errors around where the hole is. The reason this occurs is because the boolean creates n-gons on this curved surface. N-gons on curved surfaces cause shading problems because Blender doesn't know how to accurately shade this type of polygon. As for the issue when adding the bevel, the reason these nasty artifacts occur is because we now have overlapping geometry. Notice when I add the bevel, the bevel geometry begins to overlap with the surrounding geometry. Now check this out. The more dense the sphere is, the less shading problems we have when making a boolean. That is because as the sphere gets more and more dense, the n-gons created by the boolean get smaller and smaller. So basically, the more we subdivide the sphere and run a boolean on it, the less noticeable shading errors we'll have. So you can imagine that if the sphere was infinitely subdivided, then we'd theoretically have no shading errors at all. And this is exactly what a CAD surface is. You can think of it as an infinitely subdivided mesh. And the way these types of meshes are calculated is via mathematical equations. So CAD surfaces are basically defined by mathematics and polygon meshes are defined by, well, polygons. So the nice thing about the CAD workflow is I don't need to stress about shading errors or overlapping geometry. There's no such thing as geometry in this context, and I will always have a clean mesh when I use my booleans. So how exactly does this stuff tie into the Mesh Machine add-on? Now this is where things get pretty exciting. Mesh Machine basically brings the CAD workflow into Blender. Let me show you how. I'm going to take a sphere with a few subdivisions applied, and I'm going to run my boolean operation afterwards. You'll see that there aren't that many shading issues because the mesh was already pretty dense. Now let me add in my bevel around the cut. And just like before, the bevel starts overlapping with the surrounding geometry and causes a massive mess of artifacts. This is where Mesh Machine comes in. What I can do here is use the Offset Cut feature, which is enabled in the experimental settings, and what this will do is eat the surrounding geometry, giving me room to safely run my bevel pretty damn awesome. What this add-on is effectively doing is bringing the CAD workflow to Blender by helping us avoid these common problems with polygon-based modeling software. Another thing we can do is use something called a Boolean Cleanup. This will help us merge all the near-miss vertices together to clean up the mesh a bit more after these operations. So instead of merging all these vertices manually, 
Boolean Cleanup will detect it for us and automatically merge them. Pretty neat. Now, this next feature is amazing and probably one of my favorites. Let's say I union these two cylinders together like this and I want to run a bevel between them. Well, first of all, I need to select all the edges that are fusing them together. Usually, we'd hold Alt and select a loop of edges, but due to the end gons here from this Boolean, Blender doesn't know which direction to select. So instead of selecting all the edges manually, we can use Mesh Machine's L Select feature. I simply select one edge, choose L Select, and Mesh Machine will know exactly which loop to select, even if there's end gons around it. Alternatively, I can select one edge and then Alt click that same edge to activate L Select. From this point, I can bevel the edges, but since this bevel overlaps with the surrounding geometry, I can simply use our offset cut feature and run the bevel. And afterwards, I can clean up the mesh a bit using the Boolean cleanup tool. Now, all the stuff I've shown you with Mesh Machine is only the tip of the iceberg. Mesh Machine can do other insane stuff like undo chamfers, undo bevels, change bevel width, and even adjust the bevel segments in much much more. This add-on is simply insane, and if you want to learn more about it, check out some of these videos here. Now, to address the elephant in the room, why not just use CAD in the first place? Well, first of all, I purposely did some of these operations in Blender slowly for the sake of, you know, you watching this video. In a normal workflow, I'd be doing these operations much quicker and with much more efficiency. Because of this, it wouldn't make sense for me to use CAD here because I'd be working at the same level of efficiency. However, CAD is simply unbeatable in terms of getting truly clean meshes, mathematical accuracy, and of course precision. This is why many engineers use CAD and why many artists, game developers, and other industries use Blender. It simply boils down to your workflow and what software you prefer. As I said, Blender is my go-to and with all the add-ons out there helping us to get a more robust workflow, I'll personally be sticking with Blender. So it really all boils down to what do you want to accomplish, what workflow do you want to use, and are you like me and do you just prefer Blender? I'd rather have a little bit more of a headache when modeling, but be able to fix that with add-ons like Mesh Machine so that way I can stick working in Blender. So I'm not gonna be the guy forcing blender down your throat this is just what i prefer to use and this is what my channel is all about anyways i hope this video was helpful to you and if you want to pick up mesh machine it's one of the few add-ons that i personally endorse you can pick it up in the link in the description also check out blenderbros.com where you can grab some of our premium courses free resources and learn more about hard surface modeling in blender and if you want to get started with hard surface modeling using these tools, check out our free sci-fi terminal design and blender course. It'll get you up to speed with add-ons like hard ops, box cutter, mesh machine, and a couple others. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.